Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, October 24th. Tesla is planning a new congestion fee at supercharger stations, building on top of an already controversial practice. Back in 2019, Tesla introduced a new feature at stations to help shorten charging session during a busy time. The automaker started to limit owner's state of charge to 80% at select high traffic sites. This limit can be lifted by the vehicle owner and remain in place to slower charge between 80 and 100%. But that may change as a hacker known as Green has looked into the latest Tesla software update and found that Tesla was working on something called a congestion fee. Based on Green's discoveries, it sounds like at those busy stations where Tesla automatically sets the 80% limit, the automaker would now implement a fee if the owner decides to lift up the limit and charge above 80%. It's not the first time that Tesla has introduced a new fee at the superchargers. The automaker also instituted a supercharger idle fee, which applies when the car is completely done charging and still parked. This just in, people are arguing on the internet. Tesla fans and naysayers are arguing about the Tesla Cybertruck and its build quality. A thread on Real Tesla subreddit garnered over 240 comments, mostly trashing the Cybertruck's fit and finish. Still images of various prototypes are being discussed, which already displays the silliness of the argument in general. Earlier this year, Elon Musk told the Cybertruck team that they need to focus on build quality as the pickup will have sharp designs and stainless steel to make flaws more visible. The Model 3 build quality was less than stellar at first, and it took a long time for Tesla to catch up. Tesla has made great improvements in build quality over the last few models, though the reputation still leads to some contention. A fair amount of news from the desk of General Motors. Although Chevrolet has yet to officially release the powertrain details for the entry-level 2024 Blazer EV, a spokesperson did confirm the prices and some new specifics. The company announced that it was cutting the base L1T trim, leaving the 2LT as the new entry-level option. So here we go. The 2LT, which is all-wheel drive, has an MSRP of $56,715 and a range of 279 miles. The RS all-wheel drive has the same range, but goes for $60,215. The RS rear-wheel drive is rated for 320 miles of range and costs $61,790. General Motors confirmed on its third quarter earnings earlier today that the Blazer deliveries have already begun. The company delivered 19 in the third quarter. General Motors will zero in on this historically top-selling model because there is a little more news afoot. General Motors says that they will delay the Equinox EV, Silverado EV, and the GMC Sierra EV, this to protect pricing and enhance profitability. This is interesting considering that Ultium-based EV production finally picked up in the third quarter. General Motors produced 32,000 EVs in the third quarter, up 23% compared to last quarter as the supply chain hurdles have been easing. General Motors also withdrew its full-year metrics following the United Auto Workers strike. The company says that once the new contracts are assigned, they will have more clarity around financials due to uncertain labor costs. Today's episode is sponsored by AMP, makers of energy management solutions for e-mobility products. Team AMP is known for its expertise in the industry when it comes to understanding the battery and its functionality. With more than 300 years of combined experience, the team has developed proven battery management systems that are suitable for a wide range of applications, starting from 12 volts to 1,000 volts. That extends to the AMP battery management systems algorithms that help companies building e-mobility products improve battery life while maximizing the power that can be safely utilized. The company also offers a highly integrated combination of charging software and hardware with AMP EMU. That includes an all-in-one DC-DC converter, onboard charger, power distribution, and a charge controller for electric vehicles. This unit saves space and cost in your EVs while providing maximum power density. Brands building new electric vehicle products will want to consider the AMP EVCC, a state-of-the-art charge controller for electric vehicles with support for all major charging standards, including CCS, NACS, and Shademo. 
and the AMP Fast Charge Junction Box to enable Level 3 DC fast charging, all built on the AMP charging software stack, the world's number one charging software capable of complying with all major charging standards globally. You can learn more about the AMP energy management solutions at amp.tech. Okay, let's go to the Chevy Bolt. A couple of stories here. For the existing models, General Motors is trying to cover their bases as the owners who did not receive the battery recall switch out before the end of the offer are a little perturbed. General Motors is offering owners of Bolts between the years of 2020 and 22 an early payment of $1,400. This in anticipation of a class action settlement and in exchange for installing a piece of diagnostic software that the company says will detect whether a battery replacement is required. Previously, General Motors was replacing the entire pack, more or less no questions asked, effectively giving owners of old vehicles a new battery. Now, when the software fix was announced and the hardware replacement was taken away, this left many customers aggrieved at being promised a new battery and then not receiving it. After years of poor communication over this issue from General Motors, many customers are rightly distrustful of GM's proposed remedies. Now, looking forward to the new Chevy Bolt, which is still a ways away, this will be built on the Ultium platform, and GM said in their earnings call that it will be the first to receive the lithium iron phosphate batteries. This to help lower the costs and make the vehicle more affordable for buyers. The CEO, Mary Barra, explained that the next generation Bolt will be, quote, an even better EV. This with engineering and manufacturing enhancements. If it's anywhere near the sale price of the old Bolt, in the last few years anyway, then it will still be a sought after vehicle. The company has yet to provide a release date, but the vehicle program was not mentioned in the list of delayed vehicles. Chinese automaker Xpeng held its fifth annual Tech Day in Guangzhou, China, and there's some fun promises and projects on display. The keynote included full autonomous driving, an AI-powered driving feature that will learn specific routes, new software, and an EV with an aircraft in the back. And who could forget the new humanoid robot? Let's go. Starting with the new vehicle, Xpeng released the X9, or showcased the X9, which will arrive as the world's only MPV that's equipped with rear-wheel steering as a standard configuration. This sits atop the automaker's 800-volt silicon carbon SEPA 2.0 platform. The company introduced AI Valet Driver, which is a new ADAS feature that learns and saves specific routes after the EV owner manually drives it once. The system can take over and drive that same route for you autonomously going forward specifically in driving scenarios in the city. And following in the footsteps of Tesla, Xpeng showcased a humanoid robot. For now, Xpeng showed images of the robot in factories and welcoming people in a showroom. Not too much to actually demonstrate there, but Xpeng released much more, such as their flying car. Xpeng announced a rugged Cybertruck-esque electric vehicle with a 6x6 all-wheel drive system that houses a separate electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in the rear. Sounds like the team at Xpeng has a lot of work to do, as conquering humanoid robots, flying cars, and even what we now consider a simple minivan, each of these to be very difficult tasks. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Sabar48 says, as a person who tows my camper with our Model Y, I often, most recently two days ago, find a pull-through supercharger clogged with another Tesla who has not backed into an available stall. Please add this to your etiquette list. Thanks for your humor and perspectives. Well, thank you very much. That's actually a pretty good one to bring up. Pull-through spots can be very hard to come by. I remember when the F-150 Lightning was first being promoted, Ford had said that they would be building a charger network to accommodate the vehicle, including pull-through spots for trailers. I think this is rather wise, assuming they actually do it. This is actually pretty good considering that when chargers are on the Continental Freeway, they're generally placed where land is quite cheap. There's a little town in Utah called Scipio that I've stopped at many times. When I had a natural gas vehicle, I would have to stop there every time I head south because it was the only option. Now, I don't know if it's true, but I heard a rumor that there was a murder in that small town. At the gas station, the zebra was killed by the camel in the petting zoo, or so I heard. 
One thing is for sure, the zebra is not there anymore. The camel still is. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, October 24th. It's the 24th, right? It's Tuesday. Ah. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, October 24th.